Hi, welcome to Cinti Roll video number four. This is uh, new electromagnetism. Uh, I'm going to show you that the terms of new electromagnet are so simple that even a physicist can do it. Okay, these are the terms of new electromagnetism V4. The reason why these are not in ethereal mechanics is because in ethereal mechanics we are going to supersede these. Okay, these are valid for doing things at the structure of electrons and above below electrons. I'm going to show you it's a very different story. We already discussed this one in Distinti's world video number two, video D002. We discussed the fourth term of electromagnetism, which is the third term of new magnetism. And this is the, the force diagrams you came up with. But today we're going to do one, two, three, and five. Um, let's use let's talk about the symbology we're going to use. A, a, a solid dot is a charge. A missing an empty dot is called a hole. That's an electrical engineering term for a uh, elect a, a, a molecule that does not is missing its uh, conduction electron. A current is defined as an open-headed dark arrow. A current change is a double open-headed dark arrow, where velocity, the velocity of an object, is just a blue open-headed arrow. A red closed head arrow is we're going to attribute to force. Okay, um, and attraction we're either going to put arrows on the outside pushing in on something, or we're going to use this green bungee cord as a pulling in. Uh, just because we show the force on one side or the other doesn't mean it's there. I'm just we're just using these different variations for convenience. And repulsion we're going to show arrows on the inside pushing out, or one solid arrow pushing out. We could put it on the outside pulling out. It doesn't matter. Like I said, whether we're, the force is being applied to this side or this side, it makes no difference here. We're just choosing one type of arrow or the other based on the convenience of how to draw it. Current paradigms, a current meaning electricity passing in a wire. Physicists use the electron flow from the negative side of the battery to the positive. That's called negative current. It's also known as electron flow model. Electrical engineers use holes. I mean, the holes flow, the positive charges flow from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. That's called the positive current model. It's also called the whole flow model. So the way we can show you this is if we have one, two, three, four, five, six molecules, and we've got four charges and two missing charges. So this is, um, and then we slide these electrons from one side to the other. Well, what ends up happening is the electrons move to the right and the holes move to the left. So either of these models work. Okay, and the interesting thing is this is Benjamin Franklin's fault. He was a scientist that realized electricity was comprised of opposing charge. So he arbitrarily called one positive, the other negative. Had he known what we know today, uh, protons and uh, electrons would have been chosen differently for charge. But let's emphasize two points here. The rule of acquisition 27, mankind usually gets stuff backwards before he gets it right. Rule of acquisition number 11, there can be more than one model that gives you accurate answers. There's no such thing where there can only be one model. And that the, the, the two different current paradigms are proof positive that there's not one right way to do anything. But no, as we go deeper into theorem mechanics, we're going to show you the positive current model starts having limitations. At the level we're talking, you know, with electronics and electrical engineering, either model works fine. But as we get into um, later things in ethereal mechanics, we'll show you that the positive electron model can have problems. Coulomb's law says that two like charges repel and dislike charges attract, and that would be the diagram that represents that. This is the Coulomb's uh, model test. And one thing about Coulomb's model is the constant relation is times 10 to the positive 11. So the effects are very, very, very pronounced. And what we have here is a times 1,000 amplifier, which is a uh, microvolt sensitive device, and it's chopper stabilized. Over here is a two-sided PC board look, acting like a capacitor. We've got one side of the PC board connected to the positive terminal and the other side connected to the negative terminal with a one mega ohm resistor to bleed off all the excess charge. And then we have the output of the times 1000 amplifier hooked up to a micro ammeter. This is essentially a galvanometer. That We're using it like a galvanometer. What I have here is a comb. I'm, let me switch this on. There's going to be a spike in the galvanometer from turn on, then it'll bleed off. And I've got the comb at about Oh, about a foot over the capacitive plate, and I'm going to push it up and down. You can see there's a very slight 
uh, deflection of the galvanometer setup. Uh, that's because there's a very ever so slight charge on the comb. Now, let me comb my hair, and you see every time I pass it through my hair, you're going to see the needle deflect. And now let me bring it in one foot above. You can see now there's a significant charge on the comb. And as I wiggle it now, you see a tremendous deflection in the galvanometer. What we're doing is we're, we're capacitively coupling to the capacitive plate and we're pushing the charge through the amplifier through the microammeter. And you can see there's a significant, significant deflection of the needle. And that's one of the nice thing about Coulomb's law. It's very sensitive. You can uh, do lots of things with it. And the, one of the problems with doing uh, magnetic measurements is, are, are, is that you have to somehow couple out the capacitive coupling to get accurate magnetic measurements. That's one of the uh, problems because magnetic models, the, the constants times 10 to the minus 7. So they're very, very, very down low. Uh, that ends this demonstration. New magnetism term, which is the second term of new electromagnetism, shows that if you have a source charge and you take a target charge, which could be a wire or it could be a separate charge, and if you move that charge toward the source current, it's going to experience a force opposite. If you move it away from the source current, you're going to get a force in the direction of the source current. Over here, that says the same thing. If you have a current going away, you're going to get a current like. If you've got a current moving in, you're going to get a force that is opposite. And there's a simple experiment for that, and we're going to go to that experiment next. Hi, right, this is the demonstration of the second term of new electromagnetism. What we have here is a wire that runs to uh, loops from the positive to negative terminal of a times 1000 preamplifier, a chopper stabilized so it has low input offset. And the reason why we have to do this is because in magnetism we're already starting off with a constant that is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So in order to see something we have to multiply by thousands and thousands and thousands in order to get something that's visible. So in the magnet we got like 2000 amps here we have 1,000 times multiplication, that's times a million. And in here, this is microamps, so we're times uh, 1,000 again. Now, but, okay, let me just state for some, even though we're, we're converting this to a voltage, um, the microamps here, you know, it's, it's, so, I mean, we're not really measuring, microamps means nothing, it just says we have a current. So we're using this like a galvanometer. That's the best way to explain this. As I move the target, the wire, toward the source, which is the magnet, Okay, you can see the needle deflect. Okay, and if I move it away, you get the opposite. And I can do that on the opposite side of the magnet. Because now the current's going the other way. As I move it toward, it, the needle should deflect toward the bottom of your screen. And as I move it away, it should deflect toward the top of your screen. Okay, returning from that experiment, we're now going to go to the third term of new electromagnetism. And that's almost the same thing as before. Now instead of you keep the target charge in one place and you move the source. So really you could put these together by saying that VT minus VS dot R direction times VS. And the reason why I keep them separate is because I like to tell people when they try to tell me that my new third term of electromagnetism uh, violates Newton's third law, I like to show them all this violates Newton's third law and this is part of F equals Q V cross B. And the silliness is these are all based on experiment. Oh, let's go back, let's go to that experiment now. For the four, third term of new electromagnetism, I'm going to move the source. And you get the same effect as if you moved the magnet. Okay, coming back, and so the, the problem I have when people say that this violates Newton's third law is the fact that these are experimentally observable. So it's nature that's violating Newton's third law, which means Newton's third law is wrong. And I show that in Ethereal Mechanics video number 14, I believe it is. 
and I show a logical alternative. Okay, and new induction. This is the fifth term of new electromagnetism. Basically, if it, sa it says if you have a exchanging current, you're going to induce a force opposite in a target charge at a given distance r. Okay, and you can have a changing current or you can have accelerating charge. It doesn't matter, you get the same effect. Okay, this is the term five of new electromagnetism demonstration. Well, essentially what we have here is a, uh, because we can't use a magnet which has got thousands of amps, we have to substitute a coil of wire that's got thousands of turns and coil our uh, wire from our times 1000 amplifier as a secondary. And what I'm going to do with this battery is I'm going to do some current into the coil of wire to show you a time changing current generates a voltage here which will deflect our makeshift galvanometer here. Uh, let's do it one way first. Now be careful with this. This thing generates hundreds of volts in, in uh, kick so just be careful with it. You can see that the needle deflected one way and when I took it off it deflected the other way. Now let's switch the battery around and you'll see the needle deflect the opposite way. And then I pull it off. Ow, I just got zapped. Sorry, I do. <laughs> anyway, that's, um, that's um, uh, the induction model. Thank you. Okay, returning for that, from that experiment, we demonstrated that the terms of new electromagnetism, uh, they're consistent with observed phenomena, and they are only boundary conditions. They only mimic what happens. All of these things, what was done is we took some charge, we did something with it, and we saw how it be another charge somewhere over here behaved. Okay, all of these are just empirical models. All of these, none of these are laws. Like Coulomb's law is called a law. That's, a mis that's disingenuous. It's not a law. It's a mimic of observed phenomenon that was curve fit. It's empirical data. All of them are empirical data. So any theory that we develop, any theory on mechanics, has to predict all of these empirical outcomes. Okay, they're not laws handed to us by God on stone tablets. Okay, they're not laws. They're just empirical models. That's all they are. That's why they have limitations, because they're just empirical models, all of them. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, thank you. This is uh, Einstein with his voodoo. Uh, if you can donate, I'd appreciate it. If you can donate, go to my website. There's a donate button. Sorry, my website's out of date. Uh, my name's Robert Sinti. I'm an electrical engineer with over 30 years' experience. Uh, if you do subscribe, you will get the videos when they come out. Um, thank you.